Hello. I'd just like to warn you that the following program contains a few words of exuberance which may not necessarily be appropriate for young people. And if by chance you are a young person listening and you don't know what exuberance means, in these circumstances I'm afraid it means some of the words are a little bit on the strong side. Broadcasting from the stages of London, this is Musical Talk, the UK's first independent musical theatre podcast. Hello, welcome to our 37th episode of Musical Talk. Sitting across from me is Emma Williams. Hello. Hello. And Mr. Martin Ball. Hello. From uh, your Dr. Dillerman, aren't you? Indeed, in Wicked. Until I get a mister. Do you notice you just get Emma Williams? I know. Well, you're the Emma Williams, that's why. <laughs> you're not Miss Emma Williams. <laughs> no, because they keep calling me Ms. I hate that. Muz. I'm too young to be a Muz. <laughs> Muz was a shame, wasn't it? Yes. Because the idea behind Muz, this has nothing to do with musicals, but just very quickly, was really a good one. Mm. Why should, you know, a man is just Mr. whether he's married or not. Yeah. Why should a woman be defined by whether or not she's married? It's an appalling idea. I'm Absolutely. totally with that. But Muz, as a word, is dreadful. Mm. Now, compare with carbon footprint. That is a wonderful phrase. It's a wonderful little bit of poetry, isn't it? Carbon footprint. And it takes an idea which is a little bit lofty, the whole kind of E thing, and, oh, dear, have I really got to do that, and do more recycling and all mm-hmm. that, and makes it completely attractive. Mm. Talk about my carbon footprint. Suddenly I want to do something about it. The footprint element says, makes it deeply personal. It says that I have a specific personal responsibility. I'm leaving for, my mark. Yeah. yeah. For, 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 for the mark I leave ecologically speaking, in global warming, yada, yada, yada. Okay, moving so on. So you know where you are with that <laughs> phrase. And where, if only Muz had got a word like global... See, Muz to me just conjures up images of feminists yeah. or, or lesbians or being divorced. And I'm and, kind of... I'm none of those. And humorlessness, <laughs> above yes. all. Yes, I'm not a miss or a missus, I'm Muz. Yeah, there's no joking with Muz. I had a drama no. teacher who insisted on being called Muz. You, yeah. you can't put your hand up and call Muz. In class, it doesn't, there's no vowels. It doesn't no, work. No, that's right. It's M and Z. It's like megahertz or something. <laughs> yeah, there's no vowels. There's no plosives. There's and nothing it's you can do with that. rubbish in Scrabble for points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So today we'll be talking about Wicked, obviously, because we've never done that in any of the episodes. And <laughs> <laughs> we have actually many times. And uh, Martin and I um, actually saw The Drowsy Chaperone on the same day without knowing it. So we'll be discussing that show. Brilliant show. Very funny musical. Fabulous. And, um, oh, I loved it. Good. I loved it. Very, very good. Yeah. And, and you're not really a musical theatre man, are you? No, lightning has struck twice now. I don't know what you're doing on this podcast sing. then. But, um... <laughs> yeah, I know, well, quite, quite. But I do love musicals. I'm going yeah. to bring my passion, if no particular talent, to, to the day. You can if, sing. That's right. I've no, heard you, I really... Can, well, I've heard you harmonise. If I sing at all, it's, I'm, like, I'm the old school bass. What I am not is a light pop tenor, which is what I needed to be in Mamma Mia. And that really was a... Bit yes, because you've done Mamma Mia. That that's, my other, that's what I meant by lightning having struck twice, is I've done two musicals, yeah. Two great musicals. Yeah, two Didn't great Didn't put you off musicals. the first time, then? No, I absolutely loved it. I had a pal who was in Mamma Mia from day one, who I've known since I was 16, and he called me one day and said, come and, you know, they're auditioning for, for Harry, one of those three dads, come and have a go. And I said, Andy, you know what my singing's like. I sing like a, a cat horse being castrated. a pole up its ass. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, a cat, but yeah, quite. I mean... It's just ter- terrible. And he said, no, I think you could get away with this. He said, yes, you're right, you do. But I think you get away with this. So I thought, he's, and I said, no, I don't. He said, look, what's the worst that could happen? You get a funny story about how shit your audition was. I thought, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I'm not too proud for that. Lots of bleeping in this episode, obviously. Yeah. I guess. And so I, so, so, so I said to my agent, what do you think? I could hear the laughter down the phone. From, <laughs> I was filming. It's one of those odd things. I was filming um, something rather. And you know what filming is like, hurry up and wait. And you're sitting in your little box, you know. And I should have been on set at, I don't know, 7 then. Was this for the Ali G movie, by any chance? No, it wasn't. No, it was some, it was some telly or other. I can't right. remember what. And, uh, and I was just sitting there. And it was noon, and I should have been on set at probably 8 a.m. or nothing. And I was sitting there, and I'd forgotten my book. And I was, and I was kind of... He'd, Andy had called, and I was thinking... Two hours later, I was thinking, I'm so bored now. What can I do? I'm going to chew my own foot off of it, you know. Um... I know, I'll phone my agent and, and, and see what she thinks about this ridiculous idea. And she said, well, do you want me to put you up for it or not? I said, well, I don't know. I, I was just 
killing time, really. You know, <laughs> she said, "Well, why don't I just, you know, put you up and see what happens?" And and if I'd been called on set within two hours of when I should have been called on set, I'd mm. never have made that call. It would you wouldn't have been, be here. Today. Oh, bless him. Yeah, really. Yeah, and um, I really wouldn't because I wouldn't have given it another thought. And only because I was brought out of my mind, who can I call now? Mm. You know. And I, I get like agent. that. No one picks up their phone when I call. Them. <laughs> really I think cool. my agent's just getting sick of me. They don't go, "Hello, who's this? this? Emma? Yes, what? Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> me when I'm bored on lunch breaks. When no. my, if my client was Emma Williams, I'd answer the phone. I tell you, <laughs> when you my call God. the phone and you get yes on the other end, that's that's not a good sign. Well, it's the fact that I actually when I say it's Emma Williams here again. <laughs> it's the again that comes yeah. in. I think they they don't phone me for jobs because they know I'll call them four times in a day. So. Oh. <laughs> So, I, so you did Mamma Mia, and yeah. So that was it. So I did. So I went up. They said, well, well, "Right, okay, you've got to do it." And they said, you, 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 you've, "We want two, um, two contrasting pop songs." I thought, oh, "I knew I was in the wrong bloody place. This is ridiculous. I don't know any pop songs. I don't know anything about the Hit Parade at all. I'm hopeless." Did you hear that? Listen to the Hit Parade, and um, oh, they've the gone back to the 1940s. Yeah, no, hopeless. I thought, well, they're getting Nightingale sang in Berkeley Square, and that's the end of it. <laughs> So I went in. Gorgeous said, song. To, he said, what are you going to sing? And I said, well, I haven't got, I've only got one contrasting pop song and it's not a pop song. And he said, what is it? And I said, well, you know, Nightingale sang in Barclays Square. And he said, well, it, it was popular in its exactly. day. Exactly. I mean, people <laughs> I say thought, it's pop. Think Pop, you think it has to be post-1955, which is when the hit parade started. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, you think of, you know, Gershwin is pop music of the day. Yeah. Because people listened to it. They went into the shows knowing yeah. all the songs. Verdi was pop music of his day. Yeah. Magic Flute was pop music. Exactly. Of his day. So, I mean, who cares what pop music is? I know, yeah. It's pop yeah. music. You What's could... in a name? <laughs> yeah. Is that man once? So, it? that was it. I did it. And I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I loved being part of a company for a year. That was the main thing that mm. I loved. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very interesting aspect, I think, to when you're doing shows. I've worked on a lot of shows which have been three months and you form very quick, tight bonds yeah. and then you leave and never hear from yeah. anyone again it's really random but sure having them two shows for sort of a, a, a longer period of time it's lovely to get into that sort of family atmosphere really it is. nice it's a family it? yeah it's, yeah it it's really is great family. well welcome you go to, to the musical, musical talk family ah oh, lovely Aww. thank you nick thank you thank you lovely to be here but i'm as a it, it, when i do i'm mostly i'm an, an old telly whore you mm. know and and those you can be on something for a day or, yeah. or four days or a month or something you or know half a day and you know and you just you just do all your best stories in mm-hmm. one day and There's go all those, again. There's all those random ones as well where you you turn up for sort of you know a week and then trog back off again. You might come back three weeks, four weeks, yep. two months later. Yep. Mm-hmm. I seem to remember when I, I did Bleak House and was and had four weeks of filming to do over five months and had sort of a week at the beginning, two weeks in the middle, and a week at the end. And I was like going back, going, I can't remember anyone's name. Sounds I can't like remember my name. Yeah. It's so strange. What did you do on Bleak House? Uh, I played Rosa Cartwright, Gillian Anderson's maid. You did, didn't you? you know, I didn't realise that was you, with my terrible face blindness. I didn't realise that was you. Emma was oh, also I in Chitty Chitty Bang it. Bang. <laughs> yes, yes, that I didn't. Know. Opposite your brother. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. My singing brother. Yes. yes. Yeah. The one, the one with the singing talent. <laughs> So I, mean, I was a big fan of Chalk when I was younger. Were you? Yeah. It, there's one line at uh, Chalk was a sitcom. Well, Martin, tell us about Chalk. Tell us about Chalk. Chalk was a sitcom by Stephen Moffat, who wrote, who had great success subsequently with Coupling. Yes. And Chalk was very, very good scripts, which mm. I think we ballsed up, actually, to be fair. And after, after we'd done them, we did two series. After we'd done them, and I knew we weren't quite getting it right, I realised why. And it was, I, I saw, saw an episode of Faulty Towers, in which sort of vein it, it vaguely was. Not, mm. not wishing to compare it, because Faulty Towers is beyond all comparison. But there was something about Faulty Towers that, at the beginning of each episode, you thought that today it might just be all right. It's a gourmet dinner. All we've got to do is type up the menu for the gourmet dinner. So you just put the paper in, you start typing, and the phone goes. And it's Sybil. And have you typed up the gourmet menu well I would have typed up I was doing it I would have typed if you hadn't called but now you know and now he's one step behind and then very quickly it starts going that's when he picks up the phone and goes yes what yeah and then it all just slowly begins to fall apart Mm -hmm. but you believed for a moment at the beginning of each episode that it could be all right this time Mm. and what we got wrong on on, I sometimes feel like that when we're recording these episodes to be honest with you yeah 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 it's life isn't it it could be all right it could be all right but it just collapses yeah and with that's what we didn't get. We mm. we started and it was mad, and you didn't you couldn't believe that this was really a school. It was mm. set in a comprehensive and 
It but was, it was lovely. You never went to my school. <laughs> <laughs> there was one line I remember, which I, I still remember to this day, and that you had the sort of um, the headmaster, the very strange headmaster yeah, who yeah. was always on a the brilliant David Bamba, yeah, on a highly strung headmaster, yes, and, and yes. he, this boy was being punished, and he made it made a plasticine model of God. Which I just remember laughing my head off, and I think that's you know the most impossible thing you could ask someone to do, and yeah, that, that's right. the he only did, bit I yeah. remember. And and I, uh, if you are want to see Martin, you can go to YouTube and search for Chalk and see clips of him. Is it? Is it on? Oh, I didn't know that. You can buy the episodes in the shops. I know yeah, that. That'd be that, the more sensible option, I think. So uh, yeah. ignore that comment and go to your local HMV and buy Chalk on DVD <laughs> and, and support Martin. <laughs> yes, who would get about eight pence? For every 10 that was sold. The first I time I met Emma, she had a check for 12p for doing doctors. My yeah, royalties do, being you, sold. Yeah. Somewhere. It's wonderful. You get that get that check sent through and you go, I don't know whether I should just cash this or frame it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think Cost they rely on this to let the latter. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, they sold it to Iceland. Yeah, really randomly. Pence. You know, sales to some random Eastern European country of heartbeat. You know, yeah. like that. Oh, fabulous. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> when great. did I do heartbeat again? <laughs> Sound great oh. with translations going on in the background. Yeah, the 60s music's so popular over there. So, uh, flashback to summer, I guess summer of last year, 2006, mm. which would be last year. Let's listen to this episode in 2009, wouldn't it be three years ago? But um, what happened? Um, we, we uh, 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 Chalk started, um, uh, Wicked started, I mean, yes, if, if that's what you're yes. referring to. Yes, we're back on Wicked, aren't we? Yes, good. <coughs> um, um, it started with much excitement, and the booking opened, and... They broke all box office records in, in, in the first hour. It opened on a Sunday morning. Yes, I remember that. £100,000 uh, in two hours, was it? Yeah, that's right. It was something like that, within the first hour or something. Um, and uh, which, which, which at which weird. point I thought, whoa, this is something. Because I didn't know anything about the show. This is something uh, to big. Be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I thought, wow, this is obviously going to be something rather special. And everyone kept saying, oh, God, you're going to be working with Adina Menzel. Oh, my God, Adina Menzel. You're working with Adina And I thought, will you stop saying that? I didn't know who she wasn't. I'm going to be tongue-tied now when I meet her because the way this is going, you know. I thought, what can the fuss be about, you know? I mean, it's just a musical. And we sat down on that, mon- that, that terrifying Monday morning mm. that you, Emma, know so well. From these shows, which sk- still scares the living crap out of Absolutely. Me. I mean, you get a big circle of people with scripts and, and yeah. nobody really knows each other. You've done the quick hello and a cup of coffee and maybe a croissant in the morning. Yeah, it's, that's it. And then the it's coffee you rough. can't taste, the croissant you can't no. taste because you're so terrified. Absolutely. And you're kind of sat in a corner going, oh my God, oh my God, it's my line next, it's my line yeah. next. Be and good. That's exactly it. It's just, it comes so closer and closer to your bit, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and of course, you know, Wicked, Wicked is a... Get, there's a there's quite a bit before before uh, uh, Adina sings, but uh, Adina starts, and then it's the Wizard and I, and she started singing, and, and I just stopped, you know, and just looked at her, and, and all that all that terrible, all those little voices that you've just mm. d- described so eloquently, and that terror just kind of all just left me. I just I was just distracted out of them, all those feelings, just by looking at this girl with with one foot folded up, you know, on her chair, in this little sort of fetal ball, but just giving it everything and I thought good god I see now what the fuss mm. is. I see why the booking did this I see where everybody has been getting has been fizzing at the arse about Adina Menzel I get yeah. it you're just something that's one way else. of putting it yes <laughs> she was just wonderful wonderful and of course you had you have a couple of scenes with her where you is your paper wax money what is this paper the, the paper I have to eat is rice paper oh okay yeah is it nice it's really nice <laughs> It's nice, yeah. It's a nice sensation putting it- paper in your mouth and chewing it. What is not great is that with it still in your mouth, you then have to say, "I've heard of an ox, a professor from Quox, no longer permitted to teach." Oh, so you don't swallow it? No. Well, I do. I try, but there isn't time. The, I mean, you're into that so quickly that mm. you're saying the lines prior to that, and then the opening lines with a bit of it still in your mouth, and then mm. in the tiny gaps you swallow and then go on. But that's that's not easy. Trying to get it down before having that particularly difficult those particularly difficult little lines that yeah. you want to articulate clearly because they're unfamiliar words you know a professor from Quox and all that it's, they, those aren't familiar images so you need to that needs to be clearly placed can you give us your bad yeah. <laughs> you always do this what is it with you and performing monkeys 
Well, or flying me. monkeys, true. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Fantastic. I think. I mean, I think with Wiki, one of the one of the things that we had this amazing amount of hype over here because yeah. of on on all the boards and anyone who'd gone to New York and then come back and started writing on the on the gossip boards, of which there are quite a lot in this country now. Yeah. And and getting this amazing hype, this fantastic recording of the show. Mm. Yeah. And then as soon as they announced that Adina was coming, it was like that. Bingo. Yeah. It's it's sold immediately it's for one reason that people want to, have, to see her. To yeah. have her come over. And it's a very clever it. idea, yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. it's a very strong idea when there is a when there is already a recording that's that's sold so well. Yeah. I mean that the book is the book is great and it's had a relaunch for the book as well, the Gregory Maguire book. Yeah. yeah. Um I think personally I prefer the musical to the book. Do you think the book's great? I find it weird and dark. And it's strange. a little too dark for me. Yeah. It's very political. Very political. And it's political, but it's <clears throat> It's also sort of psychosexual as well, isn't it? The, the crazy thing going to the club and the tiger yeah, and, and it's, I mean, it's like that. What are we in Amsterdam tiger. all yeah. of a sudden? It's a what little. Happens? We don't need this in the book. Surely this is what the internet's for. I mean, as, as a book, the internet's you, a porn. As a book, <laughs> you really, it's not a book for kids. It's, no, no, it's definitely not a book for kids. I mean, it's it's very dark. It's it's um, it's quite beautiful in places, but it's it's a little disturbing to read. And it's almost a little disturbing that if you enjoy reading it, you feel a slightly... Per- I, I think there's a slight perversion in an attitude towards mm. it. Yeah. And, it's, and it, as you say, it's, it's very overtly sexual. There's the, you know, the wonderful scene of going to the ballroom in, 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 uh, in the musical it could probably be loosely kind of connected to the going to one of the clubs um, in the oh, book. God, I hadn't even thought of that, but that is yeah. that's basically the... the, the this, let's go down to the Alstus Ballroom. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Let's go down to this slightly weird club where we'll see a dwarf and a tiger, with a capital T, obviously. Giving a performance. Giving a performance on stage. <laughs> <laughs> of, a, of a very rude kind. Um, but it's, I remember reading it and feeling a little I think disturbed and going, I need to see this I show. I think, I mean... I, I, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit I wrong. Mean, I, I'm sort of venting Stephen Schwartz's shoes trying to think of a rhyme for fellatio, but I some. Horatio! Come up with a, well, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to rename the dwarf. <laughs> Nelson the musical. I can yes. see that scene with Lady Hamilton, can't you? I've got it now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. When else, what else would you need a rhyme for Horatio and Felicia? But do you know, um, I mean, <laughs> Universal are behind the musical because they originally wanted to do a movie of it. Yeah, that's how it came to Mark Platt. Mm. It, came as, it came as a movie idea, yeah. Of the novel. Uh, yes. Which would have been interesting. Yes, it would. And you'd have thought the most obvious medium. But it was very... Um, this is hugely imaginative of, of, of Mark to, to see it as a musical. Absolutely. And that was Stephen Schwartz. Oh, was it? Stephen so Schwartz called him and said, this has to be a musical, let me do it. Oh, right, okay. And they said, okay, okay we'll give you mm. t- t- 200 million. You know, you're right, that rings a bell. I think that's in the Grimmery, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Which is a marvellous book. Isn't it a fine bit Beautiful. of show merchandising? Oh. What a great bit of show merchandising. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I bought it for my nieces for Christmas and I hadn't read it till then. God, it's marvellous. Yeah. I mean, it's, for, for people who want to know more about a show and how it gets off the ground, because yeah. it takes you through the work process yeah. of the show, which is fantastic. Yeah. You know, and the and the process of having Kristen Chenoweth with the show from all the way through from the workshops. I think, was it Shoshana Bean, possibly? Yeah. Or was it Stephanie J. Block? It was Stephanie J. Block. Stephanie J. Block. had her on this show. In, uh, in the workshops yeah. of the show, who's since, you know, played the role. And it's it's just phenomenal, because I... I if you've done a workshop and you've and you've seen that process yourself, you know how amazing it is. And to get to be able to release that, to, I think, to the general mm. public is wonderful. Yeah. Because yeah. more often than not, the public only ever see the finished product. Yeah. Or maybe the previous. It's a really nice behind the scenes kind of yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Really and the lovely. artwork in it's gorgeous. It does Absolutely get into cons- it does get into some quite explicit detail, which you you know you think a lot of companies would be quite cautious about. I mean, Disney, for example, you get their behind the scenes book and they're absolutely useless. Oh, really? And they don't say anything. They just have here's some artworks and um, here's oh, some, okay. here's some artwork, and it's just you know I mean this book really explains. There's a lot of text in it as well, which you don't really get from many picture books or mm. coffee yeah. table books. And it's, it's a great. Does it tell the plot when it goes into that bit of uh, 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 there's there's no, script at the back? It, it, isn't it has the twist at the end. Okay, mm. and um, which yeah. it, it doesn't reveal because oh, they right. want you to see it. Obviously, right. and that this is like because the cast album's quite clever. I noticed the other day it doesn't actually it, it gets all the music in without revealing mm. any of the sort of the cast p- albums. Yeah. Do you remember Lisa? And yeah, of course. Lance, yes, who works for us? Yes, we were wondering. Um, she, you know, we're chatting this morning, and she posed the question. Um, there are rumours of a wicked cast album for London. Then they're off again. Then they're on again. Then they're off again. Um, 
is there one coming? Can, can there was you? there was an on rumor, and then there's an off rumor, and we're on the off rumor. It's a oh, simple okay. answer. It's not going to happen. It's a shame that it, because it, it was for it was for a day or two, um, and then it quickly fizzled out. I'm not quite sure why. What the fact that it was a shame or the rumor? Uh, the rumor fizzled. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why, but I don't mm. think it's going to happen now. It's because there, there's so many great musical changes from the Broadway version Arthur. to the. Um, you know, little things like the timpani during Defying Gravity where Elphaba stands up and you finally see her, this yeah. iconic image that we've all come to know from yeah, yeah. The Wizard of Oz. And, yeah. you know, you think, well, well, this drum roll really, you know, so so she's quite regal now. And um, little things like that. Which right, right. Know, the I'm interesting not- thing is most, most cast recordings are slightly mm. different to the show version anyway yeah. because certain things work wonderfully well when you can see the visual aspect of it, but mm-hmm. not yeah. not particularly well you know, when, when you're faced with it on a CD. Sure. So, I mean, I think the interesting thing would, would be particularly because of the, all the accent changes. But then you have that, obviously, issue of original London cast is, you know, yourself and Adina and, and Helen Dallimore and Adam Garcia. It would be what Forbidden Broadway call now the unoriginal cast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, obviously, you've got the changes that have, that have you know, subsequently happened yeah. with... with Miriam Margulies. I don't know if I can Margulies. 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 There we go. I've been calling him Margulies. No, Margulies. <laughs> yeah. Margulies. Uh, and also with Kerry, who's you know phenomenal and stunning yeah. as our first yeah. British. Well, it would have been with Elfabet. Kerry. It would have yeah. been a Absolutely. Kerry recording because obviously this, there would be no point in having an, another Adina. Another one. Adina. Um, you know, th- yeah. But the fan. I mean, not just the fans. I think people really want this CD to happen. Yeah. Because yeah. a it would help with the show and it would get you know, more people to come and see it. And it would just be another thing for people to gush over and hear the new changes to the score and hear, you know, because Katie Willie Jones is fantastic. Um, yeah. James Gillen is very, very, very good. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, Nigel Planer is a wizard. It's all, you know, nice to hear different mm. Yeah, would, it would be well. lovely. No, it'd be great. Um, I think they realised very early on that they weren't going to do a deal, I think, uh, that they weren't going to be able to do it for a price that they wanted to do it, and I think mm. that was something mm. to do with the magi- They the are very expensive to do. And that kind of thing. And, there's, you know, yeah. there's also, I mean, a lot of casts now have that, that clause put onto album recordings, particularly with original original cast, that if you subsequently put the show on somewhere else then you have to sell the original cast recording for a certain amount of time. We had that with yeah. Chitty, that when they put the Broadway production on, even if they made a Broadway cast recording, our recording still had to be displayed at the same pitch for them to, to also sell it. I and think, it's a uh, way of safeguarding. Michael Crawford uh, um, had a deal that, that there was not to be an American cast recording of Phantom. Mm. Because so that if you wanted it, you'd have to buy hit the one with him on it. Yeah. You know. It's worth safeguarding your royalties. When I say him, I mean his people who said that. <laughs> I don't know whether it's him personally. But Absolutely. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Um, yes, exactly. And I, mm. I wondered whether we weren't doing one for exactly that reason. But in fact, I don't think there was anything like that. It, we, mm. we, we were free to do one. But they must surely, Nick, have thought, exactly as you've just said, um, there's, there's, there's money to be made here. Um, and obviously they priced it up and thought, okay, no, it's too much like hard work or it's not, you know... Financially viable. I mean, not financially viable. They'd have to get Stephen Schwartz back to produce it. They'd have to get the musical arranger and the musical supervisor and everyone into the studio when you know they have you know when i mean because they do cast albums before the show opens mm, they do sometimes yeah i mean we did we we recorded the bat boy album um between the west yorkshire production yeah. and the london production you're saying the changes they had to put into well we had so many changes i mean there were new songs which was one very good reason for getting that that album done but it is still Devon may playing bat boy on both albums because obviously mm. he recreated the role but it took us three months to get it through the studio because there were a lot of problems and, and the composer wanted to be involved and mm-hmm. he was in America. So that took quite some time. Chitty didn't happen for months after yeah. he opened. And that's all time that, that yeah. you would have been selling them. Selling you really it, would have been selling them. And the later it gets, is, is I mean, there's less chance of it happening because of the fact that you're going to have a cash change. Yeah. Yeah. So you and don't you lose want to the make... momentum anyway. Absolutely. And all that kind of thing. They re-released the album for London with the new wonderful logo on it. Yes, they did, didn't they? Yeah, which, which was a nice, you know, idea. It sort of fits in with the whole London style. Yeah. But, and they um, released the book with the with yeah. the yes. with the um, show cover on it, mm. which I actually and thought photos was of the show possibly well. not wholly responsible. Be- bearing in mind that mm. it su- it seems to suggest that you're, what you've just seen on the stage, you're now going to get in book form. Yes, and you're not. And one of the I say responsible simply because 
one of the problems with that is you can an 11 year old girl can come and see the show and get a lot out of it it's all about female friendship absolutely and, and then read the book and be rather horrified you're slightly and, disturbed and I think because he's going to go to her mother and say can you think of a rhyme for fellatio oh god and, you know <laughs> Another one, interesting, I saw this on one of uh, on one of the gossip board websites recently, or discussion board websites, should we say. Websites, uh, yes. W- websites. Uh, and, uh, and somebody was saying that they'd bought a book called Wicked, and uh, and they were discussing it with a friend, and they were wondering when the characters got to Oz, and it was Wicked by Jilly Cooper. Oh, yes! Ooh. That's right, there is a Wicked by Jilly Cooper. A little it? different, methinks. Oh, uh, <laughs> check that ISBN number, kids. Yeah. <laughs> not quite come and see the new musical based on yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean let's get into this female thing because would you say a lot of the audience i mean a lot of the audiences are female for wicked no i think there's a huge huge mix and i think it covers several demographics i think when a show's that successful it probably has to appeal to more than one but Mm. a central thing ultimately you know there's all this stuff about the wizard of oz and the backstory and all how clever and how witty and how it's all very nice ostensibly it's actually about Mm female friendship about it's about this mm. the relationship between these two girls and so i do think that hooks girls at 11 or 12 when the most important thing in your life is is your friendships absolutely it really is isn't it mm. you know i think more so perhaps for girls than for boys quite probably i think i think girls form stronger bonds at yeah. that age yeah. um, than possibly boys do i mean it was definitely embraced by sort of the the tween culture as they yeah. say yeah. in in Hugely new york so, yeah and i think legally and blonde well. has now done the same yeah um yes. i think it's a slightly different culture there to to hear but it's 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 certainly a, I, I, as a show for portraying very good messages to, to young females I think it's great in that respect yeah. it's, it's it's very strong which is wonderful it's nice to see strong female roles yeah that's fantastic isn't it absolutely yeah. and it's all about those girls mm. I mean no one else we, the rest of us are just sort of satellites around that you know which is fine in lovely. lovely costumes and with fabulous <laughs> makeup <laughs> quite but it is really about them yeah totally. absolutely um, uh and then there's the, the 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 issues of tolerance and all those kind of things that 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 the show brings up, mm. which are great and and very important, and that that's good for children to see as well, yeah. I think. Um, and that's every you know, how many of us at some way, in some way or another, have felt at some point in our lives as the outsider for some reason or another, mm. and it goes on happening, even when you're a big and old and ugly and forty two year old bloke and you're sort of relatively comfortable in your skin more so than one was as a teenager or anything mm. else like that still you know for instance I live at Arsenal and I don't really follow football and I still feel a bit kind of price cutters on a Sunday morning you say oh god what about the game yesterday and I think oh shit I don't know so- I don't follow football <laughs> someone won yeah and I still have to sort of feel I have to make a slight effort and go well, what was it the cabbie said yesterday something about the defence you know and <laughs> yeah, those sort of key remark- phrases that you just throw into conversation yeah exactly yeah defence fell think, down and things yeah so you all feel those you know we still have those things of feeling not you know I mean, quite belonging in but a lot of musicals do that that's hardly a new thing I mean it, the Disney musicals especially Beauty and the Beast Hunt Track and Notre Dame good point yeah mm. they do um, yeah. Phantom of the Opera it's all the sort of outcast who is then, you know, accepted by society. Sure, I hadn't thought that, but you're quite right. I think it it is a classic a classic theme. I think that, but it's one that sometimes just needs reiterating in, in yeah. different ways. I mean, um, and what Wicker does with with the modern audience is it's putting something which a lot of um, the audience, you know, this sort of eighteen to thirty crowd, which is what they say the new West End audience is, is putting it in a university environment. Mm. You know, yeah. you, you have references to, you know, we're all friends at uni and things, and yeah. that always gets a laugh, and uh, going to the dance, and it's all very... It's a thing which the audience can associate with, which the Disney films don't necessarily do, because mm-hmm. the Quasimodo doesn't really go to a... Yeah. A, I a, think also... They, a bop. Because we derived from The Wizard of Oz, which everybody knows and everybody loves, and everybody there has preconceived notions about who the witch of, you know, the Wicked Witch mm. of the West is, I think because of that, you've automatically got got a perception that you can challenge from day one yeah. by presenting a different image to the one you're used to yeah and i think in that respect it's incredibly powerful because it really does make you think yeah that's uh, the show's great or, uh, uh, original thing, yeah isn't it? because your audience are already going in with an attitude towards a character whereas mm. les mis if someone hasn't read the book which very few people have it's a tome and 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 other shows like that you don't have that same perception to, yeah. to challenge and it, maybe that's and it maybe twists that's the whole story so around of course yeah absolutely yeah. which is I, I saw it for the first time in Chicago 
with Anna Gasteyer playing Elphaba, who's a TV celebrity and famous for Saturday Night Live, if you know that TV mm-hmm. show. Um, she, the show, I was so impressed with the way the story was structured around what we already knew, which what Emma was saying, how the Tin Man emerges, which is a very clever scene, mm. and how the, and it was quite scary how, what, what they did to the Scarecrow. What, what yeah. we come to know as a scarecrow, you yeah. have this almost yeah. Christ-like image as he was being yes, sent right. to his crucifixion. That's right, yeah. And, um, you know, the whole thing about, um, you know, we never see Dorothy. We do, but we never see the classic blue and white pinafore. Although we... she does wear it. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Um, That's just, mu- just a waste of money. The scene in which she, in, in which she pours water over uh, uh, Elphaba... Um, is done as a, a shadow, straight shadow play with it. Because with I asked you, because I sent you an email and I said, yeah. is it projections? Because yeah, it would make no, sense for it to be a it's projection. Not, it's, done, it's done live. Um, and if the curtain were to fall down, mm-hmm. you would want to, that not to be the end of the world. So she has a proper blue gingham dress on and a wig and the curtain has fallen down. Oh. So, or failed to come on. Yeah. Got stuck somewhere rather. Always be prepared. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so and they were able to just go on and just sort of, you know, do it anyway. What yeah. new things are there in the London production compared to the Broadway? Do you know? Crikey. Um, are the projections new? I don't know. I think they had the projections in the States. Because the first shot when the curtain rises, you had this almost 3D projection with these green stars flying Oh, no, around. that's new. Yes, no, that's new. Because in, in, uh, um, in previous productions, they'd had a great, a giant hat, a giant black witch's mm. hat. And that had sort of come up and people had emerged from underneath Which it. Stephen Schwartz hated because it never worked. Well, they all felt that because it was unreliable. And, and when it was wrong, it looked truly terrible. When it went wrong, it was a um, total mess. This hat disappears, basically, into the stage. Uh... Yeah, down yeah. or up? Down. Goes into the stage, does it? Okay. I'd imagine it going up, but yeah, okay, good. Um, it, it, it sucked into the into the stage in a sort of oh, right. okay. air, I don't know, something. Right. It, it, it didn't work a lot of the times. It yeah. was just this thing that flapped around the stage. And it apparently looked truly terrible, so they said, okay, let's not let's have something else. So that projection is new. That's very because nice Because the projection. projections isn't new, and now I'm thinking about it, because I talked to the projection girls during, during text, and they had been on them all. Right. Mm. Yeah. I mean, of course, you have projections of the, the house flying and the... Um... Yeah. There are actually quite a lot of projections that aren't obviously projections. For instance, on the green... When we go to the Emerald City uh, in one short day um, and they go to see Wizardmania, mm-hmm. the, the show that glorifies the wizard and everything, and there's a green curtain there. And that has a projection onto there's it. things moving give, around. Yeah, to, just to give it extra texture so it's not just a sort of flat green. Mm. So there's, there's quite a lot of that sort of textural projection on top of what would otherwise could, could be just a bit, you know a, a basic colour, slab of colour. Tell us about your costume, because it seems one of the more elaborate ones in the show. My costume is glorious. It's a sen- ostensibly um, a professor's robes, mm-hmm. but if you were a normal professor, they would just be black robes with the tabs and a, and, and a waistcoat, tweed waistcoat. Um, and nothing underneath. And nothing at all <laughs> underneath, darling, no. It's just a little perfume. Um, uh, and, um, and so that's what they are, except that they're furry. Because he's a goat, so there. So it's a furry, um, not the waist, internet obsession, the, a wool um, waistcoat, goat's wool waistcoat, and, yes. and a furry, furry um, um, robes. Yeah, yeah, which is lovely, and, and, a, and a rather sweaty, uh, not breathing latex head. Yeah, and you can't hear anything. I disappear. No, very little. Very that, that, that amazes me, but I mean, because I mean, I really couldn't hear anything when I first put it on. Eventually, they 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 um, stuck some little holes in it r- around the ears. But up until then, I, I would just stand there and everyone <laughs> would point at me. I really couldn't hear <clears> anything. You think they give you headphones or, or an earpiece that makes you hear? That would be a bit high tech. No, it's okay now. I can hear enough. Yeah. Um, you could probably do the show with your eyes closed, fast the, asleep. I, probably. I, I I dismiss the class. I say class dismissed, and they all uh, leave and. Um, unnoticed to me because I'm looking the other way. Elphaba says, you go on ahead, Nessa Rose. I'm, you know, I'm going to stay and have mm. a little word with the gate, check he's all right. And she looks at the board that's, and she and she reads out the board and she says, um, animals should be seen and not heard. And she looks at it rather contemplatively and just under her breath says, animals should be seen and not heard. And I then have to turn and, um, oh, you're still here. Ah, And I can't physically hear that. At all? Do you, so, watch, do you watch her on the screen? No, I have to. I, I, I contrive. I'm. I hold a book out the other way, and I have my head just over, just so I have a subliminal at the very corner of my subliminal thing, and I watch her head move, and I 
turns her head moves and normally she's spoken at that point but I can with the combination of the noise of people in the wings going off mm -hmm. um, and her talking quietly I can't hear that that at all so that's how I mean I really genuinely can't <laughs> can't hear certain <laughs> lines in the show <laughs> and you have a tail I have a tail can you wag it which goes on no but other people are quite fond of pulling it and um, <laughs> and stroking it which is nice we're talking about the tail here yes yes, yes. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, did you, Emma? <laughs> oh. I have a rather sweet tale. It's come off twice. Um, Miriam Margulies um, came across it once in a scene and just kicked it into the wings. It's only Miriam <laughs> She is a rude headmistress, isn't she? She's fantastic. Oh, we love Miriam. And, and you have Caroline... She lives to shock. <laughs> yeah. She's that high. Yeah, she's, she's very little, yeah. She's little. For those of you who are in the audience and didn't see that, I, I pointed my hand about one foot <laughs> off the floor. Um... <laughs> And, and now you have... Um, uh, now we have uh, Susie Blake. Who's very good. She sings, yes, terrific, she sings, yeah. which is delightful. Yeah, yeah, that was, it, was a, it was a rude shock to hear, that, to hear... Oh, yes, there was a tune to that once. <laughs> Miriam resolutely refused to sing, which is a great pity, because she could have done if she'd had the courage. And I'm it sure. would have been a great opportunity for her to... I'm sure it's in her character. ...to though. try, you mm. know. She could have had a plan A, which was the one she was doing. And then during the day, she could have worked on plan B and yeah. just dropped it in when she was I ready. I have to say, first time I saw the show was in previews. And at that moment, it was like, huh? <laughs> but, and it was kind of a, ge a general kind of qua Many from years. people around me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Many years qua. I have waited. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it, was a very, it was a very strange moment. But it, like, <laughs> yeah. But, but great, it worked. But, but yeah. Off to see the wizard. <laughs> but Miriam was terrifying when she comes out during Defying Gravity. Yeah. With her reverb flying around the whole theatre. Oh, wicked! Yeah, all that, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it just instilled... Just, she was terrifying, wasn't she? Yeah. It, mm. it shensills down my spine. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. It, it Brilliant cast, and um, I'm assuming we'd be sad to leave it. Yo, yeah, she had, the, she had the best time on the job. Mm. She had such a good time. She absolutely... Loved it. Has she, 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 has she actually come back to see the show? Yes, she has. And she was always one who never tell me who's in. It, it always used to throw her. I, I don't like it much either. But she absolutely hated it. Absolutely hated it, being told. And there was a point in that one where she'd come and join Andy Mason. And I, and we, we would take great delight in waiting until we heard her feet on the stairs. And then say, so much smaller in real life, isn't it? You know, it's great. Really <laughs> good. No, it's really great. So I'm just amazing. wanted to come and see the show. It's incredible. Yeah, and no, I think they're both here, yeah, and all that. Oh. Who, who, who's in? <laughs> oh, that's me. I know, terribly mean, <laughs> you know. It does look like a really fun show to be part of, I have to say. Yeah. It looks like the sort of show where you're going to leave it going, yeah, I had a really great night we tonight. It's been the most super fun, yeah. And the Americans were really tough on us in, in, in mm. rehearsals. I mean, in a good way, but they were really down. They were really like, you know, this is just, you know, we're nowhere near. This thing of doing the show at night to these... Our first preview was like a rock concert. It was yeah. just mm. extraordinary. When One of my presenters went to see it, and he said, um, of course, you had the bubble, which... Uh, yeah, the bubble didn't work, and we had to stop and, and start And people again. were cheering during the silence yeah. of the bubble not working. Yeah. But it was to stand on stage, and then and there was this wall of sound, which was just incredible. You felt like you were sort of Bruce Springsteen or something. It was just extraordinary. Um, uh, see, I do know people in the hip-hop. And, and then we'd do the show at night, and then we'd turn up for rehearsals the next day, and they'd be like... Not it's just no, you know, it's just no good. It's no one in. You just think how, this is so weird, you know. Absolutely. Being praised to the to the hilt at night and then acid rain during the day. It's but like they the wanted it better and better and better. It's and like then. the critics, really. I mean, especially with a show like Wicked, which can we say it wasn't critically well received in this country? No, it never is. Well, nor, well, nor was it in the states. It doesn't no. matter. It, it really, it really doesn't matter. It's one no. of those shows which I think works from audience word of mouth yeah. and, yep. and yep and it's critic proof yeah. absolutely like and, Les Mis and now you have the well I mean Les Mis originally was what they said it would yeah. close within weeks and yeah. look at it now terrible 200 yeah, got, years later it's still playing and they got panned from both ends they got panned mm. by the broadsheets and then for the opposite reason they got panned by the tabloids you know? absolutely and the, but the point about that was just getting back to your point Emma just, uh, um, was just that it, that is you know friendship is is very often formed through shared experience and that mm. was a very intense shared experience the Americans mm. and, the, and those opening houses and, the, and then the feeling of expectation and it's that I think that, that, that bonded us very early on and I did think make, so and, and, it, and that's why it's been so happy I think I, th that, I think that's, that's the wonderful thing that I mean, thing we shared yeah the same thing with, with Bat Boy we, got, we, were, we had amazing reviews in West Yorkshire and we were panned when we got yeah. to London for the exact yeah. same show yeah um, I mean literally there was one song that was different which was so strange 
But as a show, because of that, because of having to fight against that, it really drew the whole cast together. And it's a wonderful feeling yeah. to to be embracing your show and your company yeah. in in one go. It's it's really lovely. It's, I'm it's, always aware that it sounds a bit. It sort sounds of really and sort yeah. Of shit, it's frankly. so theatrical and a little bit wanky. Yeah, it um, is. It's wanky, but, but but to come in every night when you've got to do it and mm. you've got to face the audience and everything, and to and to, to just feel oh, I'm going into work tonight, and you know, yeah, and to turn up and have lovely faces and big hugs and mm-hmm. everything, it just it does make a huge difference. I think it's a very hard thing for people to understand if they're in if they're in a, a regular job where you just turn up and you do your thing and you go home that I mean particularly if you're going through a hard time mm. and you have to go in and do a show where you may have to be incredibly happy for the night and you know what sometimes you just don't feel yeah. like it and it's only yeah. if you've got that that really good company spirit that you can actually see it through that's a good point it's about fi- it's about it's about the way in which it helps you to find performance energy as well mm. you're right yeah it does take a lot out of you it's, su- it's yeah. surprising how much it does you yeah. you when people say eight shows a week and hours wise it's you know it's not horrific but no. it can take so much out of you if you're if you're doing a show which is so you know physically exhausting which most my, shows my are. act too i mean i have come on that blanket and i, I have to bleat what i call my barrier um <laughs> i when i give my barrier i find i mean that's hugely emotionally demanding don't you? you know <laughs> bearing in mind i have often eaten a lot of cake either side of it absolutely yeah. we yeah. love the shows where you get just enough time off stage to gorge on sweets i will never i've so landed with my ass in the marmalade with wicked because it's such a great <laughs> little part you do enough that they establish who you are mm-hmm. then you go away eat cake flirt with wardrobe while they go on talking about you and keeping your name alive absolutely and halfway through act two there's uh, there's there's Alphaba, you know, going no good deed, and she goes, you know, um, Nessa, Doctor Dillamond. I think that's it, girl. I hear it on the tongue. I think keep 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 Me? the keep the thought alive. So they all remember the goat. Yep, it's fabulous. I don't have to do anything, but you're this sort of critical plot place in the thing. That's and, that's the only problem is you gain no. a lot of weight throughout it. <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, if you do yeah. if you're me. <laughs> yeah. And when you come on, no one knows who is under this cloth. And when you are finally revealed, you always hear, oh. Oh, I didn't know that, that nobody knows who it is. I wasn't sure I mean, whether... The, each time I say it, I sort of forget that... It, well, you, you know. forgot. You have, to be fair, forgotten yeah. about him at that moment. It's been so and, long. And he appears, you know, he can't... Well, you're assuming it's a monkey, because that's, that's what yeah. you're told. And because you're told yeah. that... And the monkey's in there, yeah. 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 And, and, and because you're the sort of... Your character really starts this whole story for Alphabet. Yes, he does, yes. And yes. It, it's all, you know, you're reverted back to why... Alphabet How, has gone, why she started this gone nuts. Yeah. Dr. Dillamond is the political catalyst in it, yeah. showing yeah. the changing of attitudes from animals to animals. Yeah. Can you can you really emphasize how to <laughs> emphasize a capital that letter? That was Emma doing saying animals with a capital A, which sounds like this. Animals. And animals with a small A. Animals. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Very good. I like the line more can, glottal. I thought. I thought so. Yeah, I thought cool. so. Animals. Animals. It's going to go on my special skills. <laughs> <laughs> Can differentiate between capital letter words and normal words. And for those of you who haven't read the, the Gregory Maguire book, he talks about animals with a capital A and with a small A, mm. and that's that, 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 that that's the critical difference. I think yeah. that's, that's trivia for you, moment. Martin. Do you know why she's called Alphaba? I do. Good. Tell us. Uh, I think I said on the show before, but it all goes down to L. Frank Baum. That's right. His initials yeah. are L for B. Yeah, that's right. So it's a contraction of that. Very mm. clever. Do you know the trivia about the uh, jeweled shoes? Yes. That's quite interesting. Shall I tell that one, or do you want to tell that one? Go ahead. Um, the, in the film, we have ruby slippers. In the original book, it's jeweled shoes. We're not allowed to use anything that is invented by MGM for the film, mm-hmm. um, but we are allowed to use things in the original book. Um, so rather than have jeweled shoes in the film, they, um, they well, they were going to be jeweled. You mean but, white but jewels? But, yeah, but they spent all, they'd spent all this money on colour, Mm-hmm. Mm. film st- stock which was an incredibly expensive thing to do so they said well don't make them silver for god's sake we spent all this money make they've got to be a color make them red or something so that's why they became a ruby slippers <laughs> um but we're not allowed to have them as ruby so but ours yet, are silver but yet there is a red light shining on them if a red light were shone on them and they reflected red that would be a different issue absolutely and there is a red light shining on them which is uh, yes Yes, that's the a word one. loophole appears to come to mind. Can I ask you two, what's your view on stage door meetings and greetings? I, I don't know. I mean, I've I've always kind of embraced that, and I think mm. I mean at the end of the day, it is kind of part of the job. You know, you should expect it. But I've had the occasional one where I've been running to get a, 
a train or something and it's been appalling she like that signing very quick i'm sorry i can't stop for a 20 minute chat i'm really sorry you know and there are times if you're having a horrible time in your in your personal life and you really don't feel like it and that's appalling but i would always um, i would always try and embrace it and and try and have a quick chat and that yeah 40 I, minute chats are terrifying that's for the i podcast. love it I, th- I think it's just great to be in a show that people can be asked to come round. absolutely you know i mean i you know i'm a straight actor as opposed to a musical theatre actor, mm. you know, really at, at heart. And, I, you know, you go off to, I don't know, Nottingham, Scarborough, wherever to do a, to do mm. a play. And you do it, you've got, there's nothing else that that town holds for you because yeah. you don't know anybody in it, you know. You, and you come out the stage door, there's nobody there, and you trudge off home with yeah. your sort of post-show adrenaline or whatever. Or you go to the, and have a beer in the pub or whatever, and nobody ever says anything. And to be in something that people are so excited about they want to come around and be a mm. part of it it's absolutely thrilling and it reminds me every night why we're doing it absolutely I mean you know? the people that come around are, are the people that that pay your wages essentially because they're the people seeing your show and bring, yeah. bringing more business into your theatre so it's nice to actually get a chance to thank them as they kind of thank you it's it's a bit kind of like it's all, all a bit it did look lovely, pretty... but it, it is a case of, of being able to go. Do you know what? Thanks a lot, and and yeah, it's re- it's really nice, and they bring you lovely presents. I mean, I, I did this blog in rehearsals, and um, my cat was in it. I mean, I have cat food now for years. I just hope she lives long <laughs> enough to eat it all. People bring lovely, you know, That's... sweet things in drawings, all of which go on At... my dressing room door. I had um... so many drawings on Chitty from yeah. kids. That I mean, I had kids coming left, right, and centre, which was wonderful, really fabulous. Because to get to to see a small child of say six with a big grin and a picture and this is yeah. you and I brought it for you it was like oh my god and enormous trouble goes into them sometimes I mean yeah. not, we're not doing just a little sketch here I mean you know you know little sequins glued on individually around the Absolutely. edges of the frame I mean frame real with gold and things yeah yeah I yeah. think things like that are almost sometimes nicer than anything anyone could bring it's lovely when people bring you gifts and things like that but but something that's yeah. had so much care and attention put yeah. into it is Wonderful, to and see. I and I agree with you. It's horrid when you well on the odd occasions where one does have to rush off, mm. you know, which of course inevitably happens, and you just think, oh, don't think I'm being horrible, don't think I'm an ass, but yeah. you you just do have to go, and you think Absolutely. you haven't got time to do it, you know. It looked pretty nuts when Adina was. I mean, they had security guards outside. Oh, nuts! It? Crash barriers. Never anything yeah. like it. Yeah, absolutely it's... nuts. We would have two hundred people um, a, a night standing mm. outside, and they'd be sort of six, eight deep. You yeah. Know? It's obviously extraordinary, but what fun! What was her view on it? She she was she had it down because she because in in America it's quite common. I yeah. mean, mm. we, I, I learnt that a new verb started on, on Wikipedia, which is to stage door. To yes. stage to stage door. Oh. Stage door. Stage door. Thing, we weren't going to stage door, you know. But then we thought, yeah, okay, we'll do it this time. You know. So yes, to stage door. Well, I mean, musical theatre performers in America are very highly regarded, they and, are. and you are if you are in on Broadway. You are known. You are and famous. You're the, you really are the toast of the town. Absolutely. And the whole city knows about what shows on, what's exactly. opening. And you're a big star. Here mm. it's, it's, you know, you can be a big fish, but it's a tiny pond. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and over there, they, 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 um, they do it. I mean, they're a much more chatty nation, the Americans, mm. aren't they? They're a much more hands-on, in-your-face kind of nation. Um, uh, and particularly New Yorkers, you know, even of Americans. Um, and so they, they do it. They go around and get stuff signed. And uh, you come out on any show in New York and there will, the stage door will be popular. You know, on a straight play, they'll do it. They mm. sign their programmes quicker than anyone. Well, it, yeah. So they, they've got that down. And Adina, they sensibly used to come out with a pen. Because mm. if you wait for someone to find a pen each time, you know, and it's silly anyway, because you know they're going to ask you. Mm. Yeah. But you um, have that feeling that if you carry a pen with you, it's I like can't you it. feel a bit silly because it's like that. I, I expect carry a pen. you to want no, my it's autograph. So it's so weird. Yeah, it's so presum- <laughs> It seems to me for someone of, of Stephen Schwartz's caliber. I mean, he's he's a guy you would want the autograph of, but because of the position that he holds mm. in in the industry as a composer, so many people in the general public won't know what he looks like. Exactly. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Half the general public that go to the stage door have trouble recognising some people off stage once you get rid of the wigs and yeah. you get rid of the makeup. Yeah. Like Wait, I mean, Adina isn't really green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kerry can walk out untroubled because she's blonde. Absolutely. So, and, you, and you've really got it in your head because mm. Helen's blonde and she's dark and green. Mm-hmm. You don't expect her green, but you do expect it to be dark. You know? Yeah. And Adina was dark. Let's so. talk about Kerry because you know. she started, uh, her sort of fandom came from Real Rock You. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now she's... She's just phenomenal. And she's the sweetest, gentlest, most down to earth girl wouldn't say boo to a goose she's just lovely lovely and um 
you know, when there's noise in the wings and there's, you know, all that kind of thing. And she's out there holding the whole thing together. She, so she's you know, a real She leader. never gets cross or anything. You mm. know, other people are complaining about, you know, about not quite reasonably complaining about noise in the wings, you know, it's putting them off. Kerry never seems to say a word, you know, and it just, just gets on with it. She's just heaven. I haven't a bad word to say about her. Just heaven. I love her performance. I think I think it's wonderful, yeah. I have to say. I saw... And to her credit, it grows and grows and grows yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. amazing. And... and you, when you're when you when you're following such a powerhouse as, as Adina, who yeah. has had such a set up on it as well and yeah. has been hyped, it's a hard that's, task that's for her. Yeah. Difficult really to step hard. into, and my God, she was amazing. Yeah, she was amazing. She made me cry. In fact, I, I think I think Kerry's performance got me more than Adina's did. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it affected yeah. me more, and it, I don't know why. It makes sense yeah. because it's now the accents aren't such a problem. Yeah, that was strange, wasn't it? Because you have this American who has a... Two sisters that have an English and an American accent. That Mm. was all... I found all that a bit weird. I think it also set up the kind of the father Mm. element a little bit too early as well, because you kind of went, oh, I wonder... Oh, that's interesting. If you don't know the story. because he's Kansas, yeah. 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 You kind of go, I just, I wonder if... It's had how many million, billion people have come to see it? I don't know. We did 2,300 a show, if we're full, which we're not always, but um, I don't know. What do you think the future holds for Wicked? As regards to sustainability, oh, it, our, we've not taken the, London or England has not taken to Wicked in, exa- in the same way that America has. That's to say, mm. there are tickets for sale, mm-hmm. whereas in the states there are just no tickets for sale. I believe yeah. that they have a thirty million advance on Broadway. <coughs> wow! And and, 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 and it's not just Broadway now. There's a national, there's a US tour. There's LA, Los Angeles. LA, yeah. There's Chicago. Yeah. There's New York. And they're all Toronto, they're all completely selling Canada. out. Germany. In fact, we get some of their overs, but we get Americans here who so just been dying to see the show, couldn't possibly get a ticket in the States, so it's, we've come here. It's interesting, because I think originally, originally, they were planning to take it to Australia before London. Oh, really? That's interesting. I was in I was in New York a couple of years back, and I sang for Bernie Telsey, who casts Wicked in America, kind of very randomly. And, and they were sort of saying, well, you know, if we think about taking it to England, we'll let you know, but we're going to Australia first. Oh, right. Okay. So, you know, yeah. now they have the London production. I presume Australia will be next on on, yeah. Yeah. on the tour, shall we say. The London production with American audience is sought after because the quality is so much better, apparently. Bigger effects do, and... Do you know what the, the strange thing is, is that anybody who, who works on Broadway will go, oh my God, you're West End. And anyone who works we, West End will go, yeah. oh my God, you're Broadway. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, the grass it's a is strange always green. Thing. Yeah. I, think, I think that's possibly part of it. It's such a big deal to be in the West End. So... Mm. Americans yeah. seeing the production here. It happens a bit as yeah. well in England um, between telly and theatre. Yeah. It? People in the theatre really want to do telly. Yeah. And people in telly go, oh my so God, the theatre. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I do little tellies during the day and you have to get back for yeah. the evening, for the evening show, you know, and you think, oh, it's going to be a hassle because they're not going to want to say, they're not yeah. going to say they want to cleave in time to get back. And you get, but it's extraordinary. You get the producer on the phone saying, oh, Martin, so, so glad you're doing this thing. Uh, we know we have to have you back by the half. <laughs> uh, we'll have your car ready for you. And <laughs> You're getting a little bit fizzy. You're a big producer. You're a big telly producer, but you're getting a little bit fizzy because theatre, West End theatre, yeah. and it's something different. And then you know oh. you, and then you come into the theatre and they say, "Oh, you've been doing your telly today." Like it's, it's a kind of a. It's so strange. One of the reasons that, that theatre has such a kind of a and a claim to it is just the fact of having to be in that place and doing that show for two and a half hours. Unless you're eating cake, of course. In my Whereas, case, you know, minutes. can yeah. you imagine? You do your first song. Can we? Could we just go back? I didn't get Professor so from Quark's Yeah, yeah. Can we yeah. do another take? Does anyone mind? Is there a problem? <laughs> that's why seeing things on stage is so much more amazing than seeing the film. Absolutely. So seeing yeah. Madonna on stage, for example, yeah. because you know she can't, you know, say cut and come back and do it again. She has to do it eight shows a week, three hours a night, whatever. Yeah, she yeah, did. Mm. yeah. Although, didn't she get into trouble for miming? Which is halfway to, yeah. I don't know, um, allegedly. <laughs> Martin and I, on Friday, saw the Drowsy Chaperone, courtesy oh. of Emma, actually. Well, I got my tickets courtesy of Emma. <laughs> Did you, have you seen it, Emma? I haven't, no. I, I, was, I was working my day job. Right. Ugh. I hate temp work so much. I was sat there You're answering... You're temping, are you? Yeah. Well, it's only temporary. Honey, I temp and I do bar work. I can't stand Come it. Come and Emma see Williams. me in my pub. You don't work in a pub. Seriously, I was in a pub last night. I had my hair scraped back. I'm in my, my, my black uniform because we have to wear blacks, as they call it. I don't know. I don't get that term. But anyway, so I'm, I'm working. The, I'm pulling the pints. And this person appears. And I'm like, hello. And I'm thinking, I know you. I've auditioned for you. And he's looking at me in that way of going, I know you. Why do I know you? So I'm like, what can I get you, love? You know, turn into classic bar mode, you know. And he goes, I'll have a half of whatever. And, uh, and he goes... Do I just know you from coming here? And I'm like, 
I think you've auditioned me. And I realised it's an MD I was speaking oh, to no. on the phone only the week before. Oh, no. Who was it? His name is Callum. And I'm, it was oh. just hilarious. Callum McLeod. I'm like, like, this is really embarrassing. I haven't seen him in two years. So oh, I'm like, like, God. Completely so, so well, terrible. At least you met in like, a social environment. Yes. Yeah, so it's like that. Yes, this is what I do these days. So you, it's, it's, it's well, the kind of filling in thing. you knocking down and doing all those things. You got him a drink, at least. I did. Well, he paid for it, obviously. As men should. You know, just one of those those random things. <laughs> anyway, oh. where were we? Oh. What were we talking about? Wait, let's talk about oh, Drowsy. Drowsy. Yes, Drowsy. there yeah. we go. Thank you very much for the tickets to Drowsy Chaperone. It was, yeah, it was a wonderful. Um, so you thank you. At the no, no, just thank you. To, thank you, to Alex, who organised those. Thank you, Alex. Me. Thank you, Alex. Did um, you get yours free, Martin? I did. Good. Hooray. <laughs> they thought, okay, it's a Friday matinee. Mm -hmm. No one's going to know about a Friday matinee. Mm. No one's looking for a Friday matinee. We, we, you know, we haven't sold any seats. Let's paper the house. Let's get people from the business in who who can then spread the word around yeah. the business. Absolutely. About it being which we're doing. Good, which is a very sensible idea. They're only putting that performance in because they've missed the Wednesday matinee because they'd open on the Wednesday night. So thinking, well, we'll get our pound of flesh. We'll get, you know, that our eight shows. classic thing at there. Christmas. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're doing six shows in a row because you want to have Christmas Day off for some strange reason. We did nine on, <laughs> in, on um, <gasps> Christmas week. Oh, last God. Week. Adina's last nine shows, and she did them all, bless her. Two a day. For, oh, I think we have to talk about her last show in another episode. Oh, God, it? yeah. That's something we'll so, have yeah, to So, yes, they said that, and they said, let's pay for that. And then on mm. Wednesday night, they had their opening night. Thursday and Friday, the reviews were so good uh, that they went, sod that, we'll, we're not going to do the papering. We don't need to. And they cancelled it all. Um, so, lots of people who've been promised free tickets on the Friday, uh, Massey, then suddenly had them withdrawn ah. and we had ah. ours withdrawn and then put back in Jai Frasca who's, our, who's in our show in his first cover book is very good friends with Summer and she, she Summer Stralin who plays yeah. who is fabulous Summer Stralin who is fabulous with her legs mm. around her ears her song was the best song on the show I think um, I don't want to show, off. I don't yeah. show off anymore. yeah Hmm. Yeah, I saw that on the Tonys. Somebody sent me a tape of the Tonys over, and that was, and I thought, what a great yes, I, I've seen the same clip I think on YouTube yeah. watching uh, uh, just. Gobsmacked. It even has a magic trick in it, which was very nice. <laughs> yeah, after a fashion. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> when she changes dresses in about one second, which but rather, rather like as we were saying about it, you know, being being a real blast that Dina came over to open Wicked. It is, mm. it is a real treat to have Bob Martin yeah. doing it because this is he is more associated with this even than Dina is with Wicked because of he course, wrote it. He wrote it. It's his gig. And you, just, you know, anyone listening, go and see it. It's special mm. and try and see it with no, oh. with no disrespect to anyone who's taking over from him but but martin but he is so yeah he is so um he's so great i couldn't martin. tell if he was improvising or if he was because i was saying to emma before you came um if you've seen the film airplane yeah. which i presume you have yeah every little detail in that film is scripted and planned and yeah. rehearsed but you can but, see that but you think it like you but you think it's improvised but it's so perfectly placed but, that it has to have been. Mm. But as regards the drowsy chaperone, I didn't know if he was improvising or his timings were extended. He, he's not. He's. I don't think no. he's improvising. I think that's the great thing about someone who's so comfortable with material. But it also just, happens with material that you've written, yeah. which you yeah. know the voice you're intending it in. Yeah. I had a friend who saw the show a couple of weeks back on Broadway, obviously, which doesn't have Bob Martin in And he said, it feels like it's lost something yeah. ever so slightly which is why I would sort of say embrace it now go yeah. now in these first three months yeah, while, that's he's, exactly, yeah. while he's yeah. there you know, it's... he got a standing ovation of course he was always going to from us yeah uh, yeah mm. um, because it, cause it was a sort of uh, it was a theatre crowd you have to remember listeners we saw sort of different audience I mean we had a, we lots did. of friends in the cast it was a bit like a sort of midnight matinee vibe yeah. wasn't it yeah. really yeah when you've, you got a, when you've got a house full of performers it's it's, it's an oxymoron isn't it <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it just gives a different vibe to the whole thing, which is, is wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. It's the most super yeah. show to have seen, really, wasn't yeah. it? But I don't think he's improvising. I don't think he's improvising because, I, as, 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 as Emma so rightly says, he, he, it's just in his bones. It's because yeah. every cell of it is it's mm. just... It's right. But then I thought if he was writing it, he could be improvising because he has the freedom to go where he wants. He, he could he, be. He, you know, he could improvise and he knows where he'd have to get to to get back to the story. Mm. Yeah, of but course. The fact I think that, that's the sort of thing you'd see more on last matinees, midnight matinees. Yeah. If somebody's particular is in the audience, that you know, yeah. but special the events. I but saw it in. Uh, I saw it. Um, the I saw a naughty illegal DVD of the of, of him doing it in the states. Yeah, and it was um, pretty well spot on mm. what, what we saw last Friday. I think the nice thing with 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 Drowsy is because of the way it's done with kind of the man in the chair and then everything coming into his apartment. Very simple mm. is the fact that it be, it will hopefully be the sort of show that can go onto the 
you know the variety programs, things like like Royal Variety Show maybe later this year, which occasionally I'm sure it will because it needs the children promotion need probably. That will we'll hopefully yeah. go very nicely and transfer very nicely into that mm. because of that setup, which is great because it means it gives more people a chance to, to get a taste. I mean, the, the title doesn't give you much away, let's be honest. No, they obviously know that, don't they? If you've seen the advertising yes. for it. So, yeah. <laughs> this is a word of mouth show. Your mouth has been chosen. It's yes. right side of the and, and, and some shows sell on their title. Well, this, this isn't, isn't one, of them. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> one half of me is really enjoying it and the other half of me was thinking... This is another parody of a musical which, like, next day I read in the newspaper and said, do we need another parody of a musical? We've had the producers, we've had Spamalot, we've had Little Ship of Horrors, and you know, all these I don't joke, think need, well, in, not so serious musicals, which now they're just parodying the medium. But are we just getting but back to a time when we need it. fun musicals yeah. again? And the, and the, 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 the shtick is so, so smart, so clean, that you think you're on Broadway mm. you know that's why you go to sit because they do that stuff so well yeah. really really tight and this is absolutely as tight I was so mm. proud of that English company because, yeah absolutely you know they're so damn good I, I saw mean, it with an American and she couldn't tell if the cast were American or English accents are brilliant yeah and 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 the timing the slickness of it is phenomenal mm. Phenomenal. I did think that set piece would fall down. I, I, I don't know if you saw it wobble. That the bed where the bed came out, it looked a bit loose to me. I thought. Um, yeah, there was a wobble, wasn't there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there was a wobble. The wrong kind of wobble. Yeah. As you as you say with with the papers, you know, do we need another parody of music? Yeah. It's almost as if the papers occasionally over here want to go. You shouldn't have fun and go to the theatre. You should go to the theatre and be serious. Yeah. Why Why shouldn't we go and enjoy a show? Like Wicked, and just embrace fun music. Well, the Why Daily Mail are a different breed anyway like of, of, of critics. And I mean, the, the Daily Mail think you know, having reverting back to 1950s lifestyle and worshiping the Queen is good fun. So I can see why That's they right. didn't like it. I mean, it got to your stars. subscription to this England. <laughs> yes, but yes. Um, it is the worst of all the papers. I know, it? apart from the Sun. The Sun has a sort of integrity about it. <laughs> I we will sell. Um, our newspaper by getting pictures of people naked Fergie sucking somebody's toes or, 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 or a girl with her tits out they There's don't try and disguise integrity. what no. they do exactly. and their reviews are actually surprisingly accurate I have to say yeah. Yeah. Me, I mean their, their, their weekend review for you know for music and films and things like mm. that I I read yeah. those I have to say I read them for and horoscopes they, they, you know what you're getting you yeah. pay money you know what you're going to get and, and they say this is what we do the tab, the, 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 the uh, broadsheets say we don't do that we, we, we rise above that we'd like to give something else we want to give balanced news in a different way hmm. da, 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 da. the Daily Mail is that Doesn't kind either. of halfway between is that I, 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 I want to be thought of as one of those but mm. I'm using the value system of the others actually I mean they do occasionally certain bits and pieces from the Daily Mail you know there's certain reporters who work for them who are, who are great I mean Baz Bamig Boy is very on top of a lot yeah. of theatre stuff. He has some yeah. very strong opinions at times, but he is very on top yeah. of what's going on. But he's yeah. only there on a Friday, so yeah, you know. quite. Quentin Letts as well. Go in, flick through it. Critics and... yes. for the time, for the Daily Mail. There was an interesting thing uh, about um, uh, reading the critics uh, of Wicked, which was that uh, they a lot of them, a lot of the broadsheets said, and, and you know, in blah, blah blah, and the songs are completely unmemorable. There's only one number. That is that is memorable, Popular. which is such and such, and they all took a different song, <laughs> and there was no agreement That's about which one song Brilliant. was memorable. But the unanimous agreement that only one song was memorable. Um, and these are catchy one them chose songs. Wonderful, which is, mm. I mean, it's the most obvious number. Mm. Song, Maybe they but... chose that because it's the only one Stephen did in deliberately a pastiche. Yeah, it was a style that you know the critic. Yeah. Oh, th this is a ragtime song, so I'm able to you know say it's a good song because that's. It made me wonder whether. You don't have a responsibility, perhaps, as a critic. I don't know whether I believe this, but I'm sort of asked to put it to the group. Mm. Maybe you have a responsibility to get to know a piece before you review it. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't take it on a first hit. I can't take any music on a first hit. I mean, I'm a, no. I'm a big opera fan, but if, you, first if you play me a hit on the first time you, you, you hear it, you know, on the, on the Emma first Emma researches hit. her roles before you audition. I mean, you have Absolutely, you have yeah. to do that. As you well. research you a subject to. before you write a yeah. book about it. I mean... The first time I hear something, hear, uh, you know, a Verdi opera, I don't know, I just, all I hear is... Wah, 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 wah. It does make me wonder how when people I get to know it, you think, oh, do when they the come and see a show and only see it once and don't come back yeah. for a second time because... I mean, as you say, when you see it the first time, it's like, whoa, swathe of information. Yeah. And then you come back the second time, you kind of enjoy it more. So once you review it, then first off, you're only getting that 
that kind of rough idea of everything, shall we say, and what yeah. hits you automatically and yeah. you kind of let things go by the wayside and others. And if there's a sort of an interest, you might think, I'd quite like to hear that cast album again. You might mm. buy it or you might borrow it or whatever. And then, and as you hear it now, you think, oh, I remember this bit. This is when the whole thing went green. This is when she went up on the thing yeah. and, or whatever it is, you know. And then, and because that reinforms it and you, the emotional connection is made because you know where you were emotionally in the arc of the evening, mm. then, you, then you start to listen to the music again and now it really starts it to mean something. It brings back a memory and it yeah. kind of has especially, a to Especially it. if you're talking about a complex integrated musical theatre score. And by this I mean it has light motifs and has yes. re- recurring yes. melodies. You can't get that on a, on a first hearing because you no. don't know what you're listening to. No. And once you've gone through Wicked, for instance, and, you, and you've got that whole motif, the whole light motif of unlimited, look at me, I'm limited, and all that, which is the first seven notes of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, mm. this little in joke. And then you go and see the show for a second time, and the first thing you hear is the second thing you hear. Oh yes, you got that dug 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 thing. And you got dun da dun da dun dun, which is normal to wicked. Yeah, yeah. Then it, if we and ha- then you hear that, and then now now when you hear it for the second time, oh oh, and the hairs go and up the on your back, go. the tingles yeah, start, absolutely. because you know why that moment's there and what mm-hmm. that, what that's about. Which is what a great musical theatre composer does. I mean, yeah, Stephen Schwartz is uh, Stephen Schwartz and Stephen Sondheim. Yes, if you listen to Sweeney Todd, it's completely littered. I think thirty five light motifs in Sweeney Todd. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that beats uh, Wagner. Of course, yeah, it all goes back to um, Wagner and the Ring Cycle and all these. Yeah. Um, it, was it Wagner who first came up with the idea of well, characters? He, he, and, he met, yeah, he, yeah. He, he's the guy that did. I don't know if he came up with it, but he he, he didn't wake up one day and think, he certainly uh, he certainly made it big. Um, there's a there's a um, the song um, the Wizard and I is um, he he wrote for Adina and he knew that his audience in San Francisco and New York, if it went to New York would know Edina, know that what she was famous for is this enormous belt, this hugely powerful belt. Can so I, he says... C- can I continue the story? I mean, yeah. Um, I think it's the one you think of. Uh, Stephen Schwartz saw a chorus line, which is now just open on Broadway again and won many Tonys. You're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, you know, you had this big kick line chorus, sort of Busby Berkeley uh, style song at the end. One. One. Yeah. Singular sensation. And he was waiting for the kick line. Yeah, was waiting. It never happened. It build up to the anticipation, yeah. build up, and when it finally happened, he was hooray! It's the kick line, and you know, it, it finally got him what I've paid to come and see. So he wrote the Wizard of Oz. Well, he I. actually thought he actually thought, oh, don't do the kick line to begin with. He thought, yeah. don't do the. It'd be too. It's so obvious you can do the kick line. Oh, oh, you're not going to do it. Oh, you're not going to do it. Oh no! Well, maybe we did need the kick line. Maybe we did need it, the... and then you're thinking, "Oh, please do the kick line." Oh, there it is. You know, and that's yeah. your payoff. And, and, yeah. and, and it's a, but a you... huge tease towards oh, it. If yeah. you listen to the, wiz- the wizard and I, she actually goes, "The wizard and," yeah. she doesn't even say "I." Yeah. It goes into the light motif of unlimited, and yeah. um, finally, when it does, I think as regards Bill Bond's orchestrations, Idina Menzel's Idina Menzel's singing the ranantando of the score that is the best moment in the CD when she has that shift and it just goes yeah. um, into some random key which has no relation to the previous so so it starts very slowly yeah and it, it just builds up into this it. huge climactic moment and I remember when I saw it for the first time I um, personally I was said it's nice to see a female actually be on the stage having the whole stage and a spotlight on her mm. yeah which is what you know that moment is all about you know the the, the towers have glided off stage and it's just an empty stage with her singing. And it really is a fantastic moment. Yeah. And it's a yeah. great I Want song. Yeah. But Which, that, because it starts so slowly, that. Yeah. That, you know, and, and then when you know that, and when you're talking about getting to know music, mm. I think you have to know what the whole shape of that number is before you can appreciate the number. Yeah. So when you know that it's going to be this huge belt that you've got a Dina there to do this, and then all you're getting is... When I meet the wizard, and it's right on the edge of the breath, and it's just a tiny, tiny sound. It's like, oh, it's the beginning of a journey. And, it, and, and, and when you know what it's going to be, you feel that it's like the beginning of the roller coaster, going up the hill mm. before it gets to the top, and then goes takes you on the big ride. You know, Buddy, the, the Buddy Holly musical, for example, you go for the last ten minutes because the rock, the, the concert at the end, yeah, is absolutely mm. fantastic. Or Great Balls of Fire, the Jerry Lee Lewis story, you go for the concert at the end. So should a piece stand up on one hearing and be heard and be judged on that? Or should a critic have an idea of what they're going to have heard it, have an idea before before they then see it in action? But if they do that, then they're 
taking a position that most people in an audience won't yeah. take because most audience members will come once. It's only yeah. you know, people like your fans and, and the people mm. who are very involved in the show that come it. a few more times. Yeah, yeah, it's so expensive. Yeah. You know, I, I just think that the difficulty is that, that it, overall theatre is so expensive that, that it's off-putting to go and spend the same amount of money on, a, on the show again when, you know, yeah. you might go and see something new. But and also a lot of people aren't prepared to take the, the cheaper seats. Um, and, and I think and it may degrade. I think it may downgrade their experience. I, I assume a lot of people think that. I mean, for me, I love sitting right in the right in the top of the gods because that's where I sat as a kid seeing shows, and yeah. and it has a, a certain kind of enjoy enjoyment to it for me. Um, it would I be lo- nice if, if a show would operate a theatre where you, uh, or a theatre would operate a, a, a version where you could buy tickets and you know if you buy six for various different dates you get a discount. Hooray! Yeah. Or more student discounts. Or make Wednesday afternoons discounts. cheaper than Saturday evenings, which some shows do, don't they? they well, have... I mean, Avenue Q have just reduced its ticket prices during yeah. the week. They're all that, uh, they're all the Monday to Thursday are like best seats for 35, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. Which, which is, is great. And that's right fantastic. for Avenue Q. No, I love Avenue Q. I yeah, think it's brilliant. wonderful. But I wouldn't want to pay. I would feel that I had not had £60 worth of no. show mm. in terms of the fact you've just got that one set, you've got, there's only five actors. Yeah. What, what, what am I paying for here? Absolutely. There's no Would you costumes. say it's the same, going back for, to Drowsy Chaperone, would you feel happy paying £60 to see that? Because that's, that's what they're charging. Um, it's one set again, isn't it? It's no interval. That no psychological interval, thing of it not having two show. halves, shorter see, show. I have to say, when, seeing Lord of the Rings, uh, I mean, I didn't pay a fortune for my ticket, but... You could have. I could have done, and I would have felt like I got my money's worth because yeah. you get that you sit there and the whole theatre has embraced yeah. this design, and that's wonderful. And you get Just two, like yeah. Wicked Hat, sure. And you get yeah. two intervals, and you get well, you get an interval well. and a five minute to be scared by an orc. Oh, do you? <laughs> <like it? laughs> Jesus, wait, don't do that. As your coat goes over the person behind. You. Thank you for the warning. And the popcorn goes down the row in front, and you sit there and go, shoot, sorry. I do what I do think. I think Lloyd Webber is worth. A billion pounds. Mm. Now, a thousand million pounds. Cameron is worth a similar amount of money. Mm. Is it not time for them to say, okay, let's do a show that we don't... Ha-. Now, that says... That says there's a lot of money to be made in musical theatre. Yeah, the, and musical the, theatre wages are getting less. Quid, out of that 60 quid, an awful lot of it goes into Lloyd, Lloyd Webber's swimming pool chemicals <laughs> fund. <laughs> Or whatever he has to spend his money on his pre-Raphaelites and his wine. Am I sounding bitter? Um, <laughs> no, but um, only entirely. But never mind. Yeah, only entirely. No, but I, I'm bitter not because I want his millions. Um, that's not what you I'm just want cross to about. I am no, but I'm cross about the uh, about the fact that people have to save so much money. People mm. who can't afford to come to save so much money to, do, to, to come and see a show. Mm. Um, so much of the profit of which goes straight back to. Well, this is it. People assume that people that. Um, the actors they in musical theatre are very, very well paid, and we're not. Some shows are, some stars are, but leads are well paid, no, and they're at the top of their tree. But ensemble are, are are paid so badly that most of them have to have a second job. Yeah, and the Adina was very highly paid for her. Adina role was. Nobody knows London. how much Adina was paid. Not even the English company well, manager knows. Not even Adina knows how payroll. much she was paid. She had her own deal with with America. Yeah. We can only guess, but it's a record apparently. It's a record for a woman. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, which this is another strange thing, why a man should have earned... Can we throw a figure out as to how much we think? Or We can have a go. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know how much actors get paid. I'm not... Well, looking at, I mean, Greece in its heyday, what people like Shane Ritchie, I think, were on close to between fifteen and 25,000. A week? Yeah. Which is a hell of a figure. You can hell justify a, a star's wage... You can, you can attempt to justify a star's wage by... By look by some simple mathematics, if you have a two thousand seat theatre, mm-hmm. um, and someone is putting those bums on seats, and mm-hmm. they're all paying, well, they're paying an average of forty five pounds per seat. Um, somebody do the figures for me. Two thousand uh, forty five um, and uh, 90, 45, 19, uh, nine, so ninety thousand. Ninety thousand. Let's just should we call it a hundred thousand because it's easier per show. Eight hundred thousand pounds a week if they are bringing in. If they are putting, if they are, if if, if, if a star is filling a theatre, which she was, uh, which some stars are, ninety percent stars were doing that. She was um, certainly right. You're wrong. In this is another conversation because it's about reality TV. Connie Fisher is putting a huge shitload of seats in the Palladium because people wouldn't be going to see The Sound of Music again, where 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 someone's coming to see that, and they're being responsible for around about point eight of a million's worth of tickets, yeah, of ticket gross. 
per week, then 800,000 to pay them 20 grand a week for that, 25 grand a week. Okay, starting to make some sense. So mm. that's, that's possible. The ensemble are not, and they're being paid around about 20, 21,000 pounds a year. Mm. Now, that is not... There aren't that many people who can do what they do, not the triple threats. No. I mean, you know, I they're think fiercely gonna... talented. They are the people who are going to be the leading ladies of the next generation. The people Some who of them, work their backsides off in rehearsals they work their all the time. Off. In Wicked, they don't get back to the dressing rooms in the interval. Mm. The interval comes, they, they catch their breath, they get their costumes off, the two layers of costumes that they're wearing, because they're all underdressed, because the quick changes are so fast. Mm -hmm. They have a quick breather, not long enough to go back up seven flights of stairs to the dressing room or boil a no. kettle. And then a swig of water and a biscuit. And then they have to start underdressing and changing the wigs for the I, for the for act two. I, I was just going to recommend, I think we should do an episode crowning the ensemble member. Because well, they and work, swings. I am the swings big, do oh, such swings, a... Yeah. Because, because, wow. they, because they work the hardest out of, you know, I mean... They do, and they, they are have not... They to dance, act, they're not given the love. For it. No. And, they're not given, and they're not given the wage. I mean, equity have sort of said that the West End wages at the moment, the, the kind of the equity minimum for, for ensemble, is appalling compared to Broadway. It's, 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 it's disgusting because the cost of living in London is very expensive. It's nearly double on Broadway. Yeah. Bearing in mind that of, say, your average wage, that, say, 450 quid, let's say, that they might get per, per week. It isn't that. And well, the minimum isn't that. No, the minimum. What's the minimum now? Is it I should know I'm the equity deaf and I'm embarrassed. Th I don't know. Hang on. It's, 303 it's, is equity minimum per week. But yeah. it's 430 is rehearsal wage if you're earning more than 430 per week after you've opened the show. But bearing in mind from <laughs> that money, obviously, like everyone else, we pay taxes and we pay national insurance. But also that's you gross. pay between yeah, 10 and 15% to, to your agent. The Americans have less tax as well. Yeah. 20 years ago, ticket prices were, you know, t um, 20 quid, 18 quid top mm. price. I remember my um, day, they were £35 for best seats in the house. When I was an ASM on chess before the old king died, it, our top price ticket was £17.50. Um, so and, ticket prices have almost tripled. Yeah, and wages... Or over tripled. Have... Stayed the have same. Have stayed the same. Apparently. I, I was chatting... Management... To so where's the difference? Where is the difference? Where, it tripled. Exactly. Where is the money going? The answer is a thousand million pounds to mm. Lord Doug Webber, a thousand million pounds to Cameron. It's not fair on the paying customer and it's not fair on the ensemble. Mm. Thank you very much, Martin. So there we are. That's me off my soap. <laughs> Sorry, put my empty depth hat on. Let's there. do the episode now. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I think, I think people should know, though, that it's not going to the people that work the hardest. Yeah, so if you want to, instead point. of bringing pictures, send money. Uh, it would be... <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm so joking. <laughs> or, or teddy bears. <laughs> send me things I can sell. No, I'm so joking. Uh, you can sell teddy bears. I'm sure they're collectors. Aww. We got given by our management a uh, uh, wicked backpack for, for when we opened <laughs> and a wicked wash bag at Christmas. Miriam Margulies was so appalled by this that she put hers on eBay <laughs> and made <laughs> 70 and 50 pounds on them respectively. Really? I think, really? Yeah. Wow. I, think you, I think you should all go to www.musicaltalk.co.uk and buy the Musical Talk merchandise. Yeah, what oh, have we, we got? Have, we have t-shirts, we Ooh. have teddy bears, Ooh. we have thongs, we have underwear, we have... Thongs? Thongs. <laughs> Yes, musical talk <laughs> thong. I love it. Has it got one of those buttons on it when you press it and it plays a famous hit? Sadly not. Oh, um, I think do, that's do, a must do, for do, Christmas. Do, do, we, 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 have, we have a tote bag, which is very nice, with the musical logo on it. We have... Um, Emma and I are going to model the thong, aren't we? Don't yes, we don't I, we'll, we'll have a big photo shoot. It'll be lovely. <laughs> there, is, there isn't a his thong, I'm afraid. But the, is there not? There's some male oh. boxer shorts. Well, how very sexist and discriminatory of you. What made you go for thongs over, yeah. say, a mug? Well, you can get a mug as or well. Or a badge. You can get a badge as well. You can get calendars. You can get posters. You can have a wall clock with the Musical Talk logo on it. <laughs> I think, I think, seeing as you now have over 12 presenters, I think you have to have, we have to have a Musical Talk calendar. Yes. With us. We'll order one then. There we go. Do you know, with a different presenter every ah, month. It could be thinking. fabulous. Mr. 2008, October. here we come. And then, th then you can have the special Emma Williams thong musical talk calendar with 12 pictures. <laughs> Emma in her thong yes. on her birth month, which is... <laughs> Ms. May. Ms. May. In her, in, her, <laughs> Ms. May. in her birthday suit. Behave. I do enough of that on stage, thank you. Yes. <laughs> what have you been getting naked in? <laughs> Model girl this year. That boy was fairly close. Was it? Uh, sex chips involved some. Promises, promises involved a little bit. Uh, in fact, I think I'm getting a reputation that now if it doesn't involve nudity, I'm not doing it. Quite right. It's so. terrifying and then quite liberating, yeah, isn't it? you like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of once you've got over it, the shock's there. It's their problem after that. I have to say, though, I didn't think I'd get my clothes off for quite as little money as Model Girl. Oh. Uh, we now have a new US Musical Talk talk line number. It is 206 202 
3848. That's 206 202 3848. So if you have any questions or comments, do give us a call. Also, on the Musical Talk website at www.musicaltalk.co.uk, there is a new article written by me in the features section all about the West End Live Festival we've just had this weekend in London's West End. You can see pictures and a video of clips of Little Shop of Horrors and Stomp. And you can also see my ugly mug in the video as well. So head on over there to www.musicaltalk.co.uk. We're now going to head over into a small 10-minute interview, a sort of preview interview, with uh, the cabaret star Adele Anderson, who is starring now in the Landor's production of The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. You'll be hearing a full interview with her in a couple of weeks. But in the meanwhile, here is a small section with Thos talking to Adele. Adele Anderson is famous in Britain, certainly, and I believe now abroad, mostly, I have to say, for Fascinating Aida, the brilliant uh, cabaret uh, group who have stormed British stages for 20-odd years. But also, uh, she's an accomplished director, a writer, a lyricist, and an uh, actress. And she's currently appearing in London at the moment at the Landor Theatre in Clapham in the best little whorehouse in Texas. Hello, Adele. Hello. Thank you very much for having me today. Oh, thank, well, no, thank you very much for <laughs> agreeing to speak to us. Now, um, we'll get straight on to this particular musical. It was uh, written in 1978. Um, what drew you to it in the first place, or playing you all? Uh, well, it's an opportunity I don't think I would ever have been offered anywhere else. Um, Jewel has traditionally uh, been played by a, a black actress because there's a great big R&B number in it and she's playing the maid to Miss Mona, the, the madam. Um, and certainly that's how it was played on Broadway and in, in the film. Uh, but it's, got, it's a great song and I've got what I like to think is you know, sort of like a big jazz voice. And so I had to find another way to approach this character. Uh, because the director wanted me to be in a French maid outfit rather than a traditional maid, you know, long, long black dress. And I took a leaf out of Beryl Reed's um, <clears throat> book. She always said, if you get the shoes right, you know, the character comes from there. And I was walking through Brixton Market. We were rehearsing in Brixton, and I f- came across these fabulous shoes that are um, bejeweled. And so, um, and then I found a cardigan that had jewels all over it. And so, I decided that's why she's called Jewel, because she likes to wear lots of jewels. And uh, the character kind of came from there. She actually, I don't have a a, a lot of time to establish who she is, because she's only got about ten lines in the whole of the show. But she's got a cracking solo number and a lovely duet with Miss Mona as well. What are those the first one is called 20, 24 Hours of Lovin'. <laughs> and she basically, uh, I mean, her job is to make sure all the girls have clean underwear and clean sheets and stuff. It's uh, an important job. It is an important job, yes. But then the football team are coming that night and the girls discover that she's not going to be there to help them. And that is because she's got 24 hours off and she's going into town with her man to have a good time. And she talks in this song about, you know, 24 hours of loving and 24 hours of this and 24 hours of that. And so, and it's great. It's a really good, funky R&B number. And then I swan off. I'm not seen for ages then till act two. Uh, And then I have a very, quite a touching duet um, called No Lies with Miss Mona, where where, uh, we're being driven out of the whorehouse. And we're trying not to feel sorry for ourselves, so. I have to say, um, the cast is quite large for this particular. There's 26 people, I believe. 26 people plus five in the band, yes. yes. I believe the auditorium only takes 65. Something like that, is yes. Is for dancing? Uh, actually, you're surprised. There's, there's lots of splits going on from the boys and the girls. Um, Which you can hear it across the borough. <laughs> it's quite... <laughs> It's uh, and a lot of you know sitting on people's laps at the front. The marvelous thing about the Landor, they they they're not uh, restricted by their size. They really go for it. Last year we did Follies, which had a similarly large cast. It's only got two dressing rooms. It's marginally larger backstage than the King's Head. In Islington, uh, but um, and the poor boys, I mean, they're all shoved in a room that has no windows at all. Oh, right. But it has, a door, it has a door. But we we girls are in a room with, uh, with a nice big window, and. What's it over? It overlooks drug deals going on on the corner uh, outside the estate right. there. Nice. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and it, we, we get an opportunity to hang out the window like real whores, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, berate the passers-by. So the boys come in and hang out with us as well. So it's fine. It's, it's very, very good, very good company and very relaxed. You're enjoying it. 
I'm having a wonderful time. I mean, I'm getting to wear denim hot pants at, at my age. So, oh, so 22, no 22. Bless you. Um, now, I'm going to ask this. Obviously, most people will know the piece from the film from the 1980s with Dolly Parton in. Yes. Um, and which two extra songs were written, I think, by Dolly Parton, one of which was I Will Always Love You, which has gone on to be a super, super hit. Yes. Has it been interpolated into this version, or is it true to the original? It's true to the original. Uh, Carol Hall, who wrote all the music... And the lyrics, I believe. Yes, will, will not allow those songs to be... I don't think she was very happy mm. with the film, because the film... Uh, just concentrated on Miss Mona and the sheriff. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of very important characters in the stage show called Angel and Shy. They're the two new whores that join at the beginning of the show. And they're, they're not in the film at all. Uh, Jewel, both her songs are not in the film at all. They give her a few more lines to compensate, but she doesn't get to sing at all, which is a tragic oh. waste. And uh, so it's all about... Dolly and Bert in the bedroom. Really. Mm-hmm. The other song that she does, that they do, is "Sneaking Around with You." That's no, 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 no. Yeah, that's in the film. So no, we don't have we don't have any of that. And of course, it has the film has a happy ending, mm. which I suppose I'm going to give it away now. This one doesn't. So, <laughs> but without giving too, there is a sequel, isn't there? Of course, actually, to this musical, is there? Yes, the best little whorehouse goes public from 1994, also by Carol Hall. I had no idea. Oh, right. I was going to ask you about that later. If you were, if you'd be up for appearing in that. Oh well, I certainly would. I shall have to speak to our director about it. See if he wants to do that. Yeah. Um, now, Carol Hall actually revised the, the original musical episode slightly in two thousand and one, and added a new song called "A Friend to Me," which I believe is near the finale. Is this version accepting that song? No. So this is the original version. This is saying. the original version. Um, Yes, and I think she moved Buster Amarillo to the end of Act One. I was also going to ask you about that. Do you get an inadvertent uh, shimmer of laughter from the audience when people know that the bus from Amarillo is uh, departing in the, uh, the musical? Uh, not so far, because Susie, who, Susie Chard, who's playing the part, is she's so emotionally upset at that point that nobody would dare laugh. I mean, she, she's really carried them. Uh, to you know, to that moment, it's a great, it's a long journey she has to make in the show, and she does a marvelous job of it. Now, the reviews have been really very good for this, and uh, for you, if I may say, Adele, because uh, I can find online this statement: uh, Adele Anderson steals all three of her scenes in the cameo part of Jewel, the maid. <laughs> and, uh, there's some very uh, people have been saying some. Uh, I mean, it's been getting good reviews all round, but I have to say, your name has been mentioned in dispatches. Well, that's very sweet of them, but you know. Well, I think that's being a cabaret performer, you learn how to come on stage and actually you've just got to get the audience from there. Because, uh, well, uh, as I was saying, with my, my character doesn't really have any lines to establish herself with, so it's just got to be there in the costume and the presence. And um, I think of, uh, I, I like those kind of parts. I mean, last year, at, also at the Lander, I did... Um, uh, uh, I did Follies and I did I'm Still Here. Well, she, she, that's all she does, really, isn't it? She doesn't really feature in the story uh, oh, apart from that. Though, I know. <laughs> managed, to get, managed to get some good reviews for that. I was also in um, Mark Bunyan's Achilles in Heels. Really only had, had you know, a, 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 had a big number in that, which I was able to... And, and then I did um, Into the Woods last year, playing the stepmother. I actually managed to get a review in The Telegraph, and she really does a cough and a spit yeah. in that. So, I, 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 yes, I'm, I'm perfecting the art of just being able to come on and steal, steal all the notices and then bugger off again. I have to say, that's a pretty good story. <laughs> so that's uh, The Best Little Four House in Texas. That's on at the Landor Theatre. That's Clapham. Clapham. Clapham North is the nearest tube. It's directed by Paul Tate. Yes. He was in Follies last year with you. He's done various bits and pieces with the Landor. Yes, he seems to have a vast store of costumes dating back through the ages because uh, it's set in the 70s. Mm. And he man- just like that, he brought out 70s shirts, 70s ties, 70s trousers, and clothed all the boys. And um, luckily the girls had to go to Ann Summers to get their underwear, so <laughs> if that's all clean and new. Uh, but uh, yes, he's, he, he seems to have everything at his disposal. And he's, he's put on a very good production for you know not very much money. But uh, I'm glad to say that somebody came last night and they said they'd been to see Lord of the Rings the night before and they actually much preferred our production um, because, you know, you put up a curtain, you're in a diner, you, 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 put, you, you put up a, a board, you're in the sheriff's office and that's all you need, really. They should be, the theatre should be about your imagination. And tickets are going fast, I guess. They are, and we have actually turned some, some people away. But uh, it's, it is always worth... Um, turning up because sometimes people book tickets and then people don't turn up and then and then it's too late to contact other people so if you happen to be there on the premises you might well get in 
And that closes on Saturday the 30th of on June. On Saturday the 30th of June. We will be talking to you again in uh, one of our future shows in the next few weeks, I hope, about your wider, really quite impressive career, if I may say, um, in musicals, directing, and all manner of bits and pieces. So, if that's all right with you, Adele. Of course. Thank you very much. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Martin will be here in a couple of weeks' time. Will I? How lovely. Good. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> Apparently. There you go. There, um, how about that? Leave you in suspense yeah. for that. A wonderful episode. Thank you very much. You really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Martin. Lovely. Thank you for having me. And thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emma. Again. Thank you. Again. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> they bring new people in. They just forget all about you. <laughs> so, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. And uh, take care. Bye-bye. This has been a production of Musical Talk. Copyright 2007. I mean, I have to come on that blanket and I have to bleat what I call my barrier. <laughs> um. <laughs>